Ow! Ooh, Brian, what was that? Just hit my head on a bookshelf. <laughs> my co-host and his unbreakable head. You're just like Vision. No, no, Jeff, I, I'm bleeding. Actually, I need you to take me to the hospital. Oh, Brian. <laughs> Is that a laugh track? Sorry. Welcome in to the Bro Four Squad podcast, where we are just a bunch of bros drinking beer and watching TV and movies. This is our review of WandaVision episodes one and two. I'm your host, the Mayor Jeff Warnasek. Joining me is the mad scientist Brian Banner, here to review this as we do all of our TV episodes on the four Bro Four Squad criteria, which is the acting, the story, our favorite scene, and then any theories or questions we have going forward. Now, Brian, before we actually get into this, I think it's worth doing an off the top, just your overall thoughts, because two things with this. Number one, obviously the very first Disney Plus series from uh, the MCU, like the one that's actually connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And two, as far as TV reviews that we've done, these first two episodes almost play like a straight up sitcom, like two episodes of I Love Lucy. So it's weird to review them in the sense that like what would you normally say about a situational comedy except this one happens to be set in the mcu so what were your overall thoughts of the debut entry of wandavision and the mcu uh tv shows as a whole i am actually going to steal something that you texted me after you watched it it is thoroughly entertaining i was entertained the entire time beginning to end no fucking clue what's going on no idea where they're going with this I mean, I have some pretty wild theories out there, but, like, they need to get some shit moving, I think. Because, like you said, this is basically two episodes of a straight-up sitcom. Yes, and I will say this. I think part of it is we haven't seen... I mean, we have not had an MCU entry in over a year now. We miss these characters. And I am glad they released episodes one and two at the same time, because if we would have waited two weeks to basically get two episodes of I Love Lucy with Wanda and Vision... As fun as that would have been, I would have kind of felt like they're sort of elongating this thing. Like, we get the premise, we get what's happening, we probably could have accomplished all this in 10 minutes, and then actually gotten to what's really going on or progressed the plot a little bit. Having said that, <clears throat> we all know that I'm the one who waves the MCU flag on this show, and you have not been far behind me. And I think this was still very, very quality output from the MCU and Marvel Studios. 100% agree. It's just, I was a little frustrated at when the second episode was essentially... I mean, you could really only, we only need one of these two episodes, right? We don't need both of them. Uh, I agree. And it we'll, t we'll get into it later when we talk about theories and thoughts or whatever, but it makes me nervous moving forward. All right, let's start with the acting. Um, obviously, we have the returners, Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, and then Paul Bettany as the Vision. And then some very familiar faces just from TV and movies as well. Uh, so who stood out to you, positive or negative here? Um, positive, I'm going to say Elizabeth Olsen. My God, was she incredible. This, this is a hard role to do because you're going from being a Scandinavian, you have this accent, you're figuring out your powers, you're getting emotions, you're falling in love, you have all these battles, and that's everything that she did in the MCU. Now you're being asked to play that same character but it's a sitcom. And set in the 50s, like with 50s. Set in the 50s. And at times, you're breaking away from the sitcom you and going into like your own little mind. You're going crazy you. And she did that perfectly. The, I actually, when I was watching this, there were times where she felt a little bit like James McAvoy in Split, I thought. Interesting comparison. I will say this. I think one of the reasons I was originally so excited about the Disney Plus offerings like for shows for the Marvel Cinematic Universe is they've always cast such talented actors. But in some of these ensemble movies, they really don't get a chance to 
show what they're capable of or flesh out their flesh character. Their muscles. Yeah, for sure. And this is the perfect medium for that. Like I'm already jacked up just thinking about the Loki series and like the, how Tom Hiddleston's going to sink his teeth into that character. I know he's probably had more screen time than Wanda Maximoff has, but I think the same principle applies. And to that point, the guy who I thought was just an absolute scene stealer here, and I've been a huge fan of his ever since the Knight's Tale, but Paul Bettany. I mean, the guy is just so fucking underrated, it's unreal. Like, I didn't know he had the comedic chops he had in this. Like, we know in A Beautiful Mind, he showed that he can act his ass off. But he was cracking my ass up. And I actually didn't even like the quote-unquote drunk vision scene with the uh, at the magic show. I wasn't even a huge fan of that, but I was just like, him at work. I was like, give me more of just vision going to his 9 to 5 every day where he's just notating <laughs> things on his typewriter. I thought he did very, very well. And his job is probably harder than Elizabeth Olsen's when you have a character that's so dry and literal and really doesn't have emotions. I mean, he does, but he doesn't in the movies. And then put him in a sitcom where you have to be slapstick funny. And yeah, I, I agree. There were some times where I felt like he, he didn't really have his footing on, but overall, an incredible job. And he looked like he was just having an absolute blast. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They all look like they're having a blast. A few quick ones I want to point out. Your girl, of course, Deborah Jo Rupp, who played Kitty Foreman on that 70s Love show. Love I mean, it. I hope we get more of her. And another thing that I think is just kind of fun to think about now, her and Red Foreman, Kurtwood Smith, have both popped up in the MCU because I'm assuming Agent Carter is canon. Yeah. Still. The I MBC believe show. it is still. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool to think about. And then I'll get into this in theories, but I have. A theory that I think the internet is supporting regarding who Catherine Hahn's character is playing, Agnes, the nosy neighbor. But one thing that I thought was really interesting, so Tiana Paris, the African-American actress who played uh, Gwendolyn in the second episode, mm -hmm. she is also playing an adult Monica Rambeau in this series, who we, of course, we saw her as a child in Captain Marvel. Yeah. And when she showed up, I had to look up on the cast list because I didn't know if it was her in that role. And her character is really intriguing me. And I don't necessarily have a theory yet, but obviously Wanda seeing these people in an alternate reality, whatever we want to call this right now, an alternate reality. We're or I guess, assuming in an alternate reality. Uh, it, just, it, it just already got my wheels turning. And I think uh, things are going to progress pretty quickly here. Although this, this week I thought was a little slow. But do you have anything else for acting? You ready to move on to story? Nope, let's move on. All right, so I'll say this and then I'll turn you loose. I, I was having a lot of fun until I felt like we were kind of spinning our wheels uh, about five minutes into episode two, because the whole first episode is just an I Love Lucy sitcom with a few slight things here or there, which we'll get into in theories that sort of hint at the overall story. And I get the point, and I think it is very clever what they're doing, but two whole episodes are basically a fourth of the show to establish that premise just kind of had me a little frustrated, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I would agree. I, I was thoroughly entertained. I had fun. I thought they were funny. I really did. But I'm with you. I just watched a Wanda and Vision sitcom rather than WandaVision, something that I would expect the MCU to produce. Um, I loved it. I want more, but I literally have no idea what I watched. Like you said, in both first episode and the se second episode, we had maybe... At this point, I'm assuming maybe five minutes, not even that, though. Not it's probably even like yeah. two minutes of footage that's actually going to progress us forward in a plot or some sort of storytelling, as opposed to them just living in, you know, 50s suburbia America. Like the whole dinner scene and the magic scene, I get they play for comedic value and they both work very, very well. But like I said, to me, it seems, <coughs> excuse me, a little superfluous that we need both of them. Right. Yeah, I think I think the dinner scene was very important. And let's just move on because I have that as a honorable mention. Um, but we can kind of tie that together. Unless you have anything else you want to. No, I'm good. Yourself. So what, what was your favorite scene? And again, for the purpose of the review, as you can tell from the title, we are treating episodes one and two essentially like one episode, which I think they released them at the same time. That's kind of how most people viewed them. Yeah, yeah. We're, I'm not going to wait three days in between watching episode one and two when they both dropped at the same time. We're just not built that way. We're not freaks. Yeah. So um, 
Yeah. I actually really liked the dr- the drunk vision scene. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I think that vision just eating a piece of gum and it clogging his, you know, whatever's inside and the way that he acted and how it all worked out and the way that they started to show how uh, Scarlet Witch can manipulate what's going on to fit whatever she wants. Right. I think that's going to come into play a lot more than we realize later on. Um, but just aside of that, I was I was cracking up the whole time during that scene. It was so funny. <laughs> it was funny to me. <clears throat> it got a little long, but I agree. If you if you were to say do you want it taken out of the episode? I'd probably be like, well, no, I mean, keep it. And that was really Paul Bettany getting to kind of show his comedic chops to the full extent. Um, I was going to go with the <clears throat> the dinner scene at first, but I think, and maybe because we got so little of it, it would the humor just lingered for the rest of the episode for me. But again, vision at work. Not yeah. knowing what his company does, which to me was very like Dick Van Dyke show or I Love Lucy, where it's like, yeah. The breadwinner comes home, and who really knows what the fuck he does? He has this briefcase, and he wears a tie to work. That's all that's really important. <laughs> and I was <laughs> dying laughing when the guy who had his boss over, Mr. Hart, for dinner, like, last week was getting fired. And then, like, him, or him pulling out all the stops, like a string quartet and yeah. a five-course meal wasn't enough. That was just hilarious to me for some reason. But he was wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem. That was the problem. Uh... I actually, as an honorable mention, have the dinner scene. And I think mainly that's because that's, for the most part, especially in that first episode or the first half of the the two, that's really the only thing that we got that was about the plot. Um, Because you have, obviously, uh, Deborah Dro saying, stop it, stop it, stop it. And finally, Scarlet Witch saying, Vision, stop it. Where, again, that's the first time we see her manipulating what's going on in, we'll say, show or in, in this reality. Right. Um, and so it's kind of interesting to see how she hesitated before she did anything. And, of course, it is a little ominous, like uh, Mrs. Hart, Deborah Jo Rupp's character, her reaction to her husband being choked out. At this point, we don't really know what any of it means. So I think we just have to take it at face value as a comedic scene. Because we don't have, we're too close to the picture right now to see the whole image, to to put together a poor analogy. Um, and again, like you said, just her in the kitchen, I was getting bewitched vibes, or like I love oh, Lucy, of the infamous scene where she's working on the assembly line with the cupcakes, and has to start <sighs> eating all of them. So good. So I think, and I actually had heard or read, excuse me, um, that they asked. A lot of people who worked on the Dick Van Dyke show, their advice, and they had a live studio audience there for filming this. Really? And, that, and that's what for the Elizabeth, whole For the whole series or just those episodes? I believe just for these, because Elizabeth Olsen said it was very nerve-wracking for her with the studio audience. And she actually had to ask her sisters, ask her sisters, excuse me, who of course had worked on Full House, what it was like acting with a studio audience in front of you. So I thought that was pretty cool. They could have just gotten a laugh track, obviously. I don't know when. I'm assuming they filmed all this pre-COVID to do that. but It had to have been, yeah. It was a cool deal. All right, you ready to move on to theories and questions? Favorite part of the show. All right, here we go. I got a couple, so we'll just go back and forth. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. My first theory is, or excuse me, my first question um, is, when is this happening? Because I was assuming this would pick up immediately after Endgame, but another question tying into that, Wanda has clearly been abducted or captured or something. And the last time we saw her, she was just standing by a creek talking to Hawkeye. So what's taken place between the last time we saw her in Avengers Endgame and now? Like, what's the time period, do you think? So I, I'm i going to go at more most crazy that it's probably not it to this is what I actually think is most likely. I think that could this be some sort of future seeing or, or she's having a vision uh, or this vision of what's going on while she's being experimented on with Quicksilver at Strucker's Castle? And that is why whenever she meets Vision, she has such an interest and in why she is so attracted to him because she already had him in her head prior to actually meeting him. Hmm. 
That is interesting. I think the rest of the series, <clears throat> this is how our theories always work. We support them until something happens that has them crumble. Yep. Because there is a scene from the trailer where Agnes, the neighbor, tells Vision that he is dead. So again, we could jump time periods, but I got that vibe too, that it could possibly be before. And one other thing I want to say, just because it sort of ties into it. So the two commercials that take place, one in each respective episode, do you want to go first on this? No, please. Well, I believe that those are Scarlet Witch's memories. The first one involves the Tony Stark Industries toaster. No. I'm assuming she's remembering when Tony Stark's missile blew up her home. And then, of course, the second one with the Strucker watch and the Hydra logo on it, I believe, is her memory of him and Hydra experimenting on her and her brother. So I think those are the commercials are a way of her compartmentalizing like past memories and things that she has suppressed due to pain. And that's sort of their, her way of adding levity to them and kind of coping with them. Like a Strucker watch and the pulse, the Tony Stark's uh, repulsor noise being attached to a toaster. Like this is her way of like sort of mentally repressing those memories. Very interesting. Another theory or thought I had about when this could be happening is could this be happening when Wanda touched Ultron and read his mind for the first time and realized he wants world destruction. Could this have been some sort of premonition or some, somehow it's, it's tied to that. I don't know. I was really reaching for straws on that one. So the only reason I'm hesitant to think that is because they do show at the end of the first episode, someone working for sword. We see the sword logo, mm -hmm. which of course we last saw at the end of Spider-Man far from home. Um, I mean, maybe they were involved with Wanda prior to this, um, but but they're there and they're present and they're prevalent. Prevalent, excuse me. Their logos on the little helicopter she finds in the bushes, yeah. and also I think the voice on the radio where it says Wanda, who's doing this to you, is Randall Park's character Jimmy Woo from Ant Man and the Wasp, who we know is in this series, who I believe in the comics ends up being recruited from the FBI to work for Sword for Nick Fury, and I would guess too that that's Darcy's. Uh, Kat Denning's character's involvement in the series is she has also been recruited by S.W.O.R.D., but I could be wrong. Interesting. Um, last thing I think it could be is this is what she's seeing during the snap. Ooh. Like when she vanishes. When she vanishes for that, you know, split second or whatever it is to them, it's not to her because of her, her mind powers, and she is living all of this out through her mind. Obviously, Vision just died in her face, and it was she killed him, and then he came back, and he died twice, she watched him like die. Five minutes, right? Yeah. So, could this be when she is in the snap, if you will? That's very interesting. I really like that. What else? And you got? I'm gonna just piggyback because you already mentioned it. Obviously, at the end, we have the person that says, "You know, who's doing this to you, Wanda?" Yours is probably way more likely, but mine would be way cooler. And I think it's Bucky. I think somewhere down the line, we don't know where, but we will find out. She And we may not even find out where she's at in WandaVision. But we realize at the end that she has been captured in some capacity. About halfway through Falcon and Winter Soldier, or Winter Soldier and the Falcon, whichever it is, I get it confused. They find her trapped somewhere being experimented on or researched or whatever. Really interesting. We know the MCU loves to tie things in. We know that they love to drop Easter eggs. We know they love to do these kind of things with their end credit scenes and everything. Oh, this is going to be heavily connected to the MCU. In fact... Uh, considering she's in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, I would bet the farm right now, Benedict Cumberbatch is showing up in this series. Like, if you said, if I'm wrong, you get to kill me, I'd be like, all right, I'll take that bet right now. He's in this. I don't know I, what the capacity is. He's going to be in it. That's that's very interesting. I mean, I, I, I want him to be. I'll say that. Um, what else you got? I only have one more thing. That's, that's, that's all I had, man. Like I said, I mean, that's the whole point of this episode or these episodes is there was no point to them. They were just sitcoms. This one is great, too, because we are working off of literally probably three minutes of actual uh, like content that could lead 
further yeah. down in the series because most of it really was just having fun with the concept here. The last one I have, and I did a little bit of internet research to figure this one out, so this isn't necessarily my theory, but Agnes, played by Catherine Hahn, I think she is Agatha Harkness, who is uh, a witch in the Marvel comics, and she often works with Mephisto, who of course is a villain of Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange. And so if Wanda is in, if, if this is in between the snap and her revival, this could be maybe she's in some purgatory or some like between being alive and dead version and Mephisto is basically like torturing her or something like that. Interesting. But Catherine Hahn's character, I believe she is playing a straight up villain. It will be revealed at some point. She even makes a joke about the devil. I can't exactly remember what it means, what she said. Yeah, it was... Yeah, I don't remember exactly what she said, but she did. Now that, now that you're saying that, it's kind of... Yeah. Now, will we get Johnny Blaze in this? Or I doubt Ghost Rider will be in this, but... Um, At this point, nothing's off the table, though. Right, Marvel has the rights back to him. There's been no mention of him. I mean, it'd be pretty fucking cool if Ghost Rider showed up at the end or something, but... I I think Mephisto might be involved. I'm not sure if he is going to be in the Doctor Strange sequel that will tie into this, um, or if Wanda creates the multiverse. But I do believe this will heavily tie into that movie. Of course, we're working off again of three minutes of MCU plot development here, so this is as blind a shot as we've probably ever taken in theories and questions. Just thought of one more. Lay it on me. Okay. So we know somehow Sword is involved, right? Mm-hmm. What if she was rescued by from the, or if she was rescued by Sword, right? And they're asking her who did this to you. That who was Magneto and the Brotherhood, and this is how they bring the X Men into the MCU. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm not opposed to it. I feel like Magneto can somehow – I don't think it's that far-fetched to say Magneto will at least be mentioned, if not brought in completely into this show. So would he be her father again in this? I I think you have I, to, I right? would like that. If you put him in, he has to be – although she did say her dad died, right? But to her knowledge, maybe he did. I mean, was there a body? I guess that's true. If you don't show me a body, then the guy's not dead. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Maybe in a later on, you know, they kept talking about, oh, well, we're married, but it's all weird. Maybe they will have a wedding scene later on and Magneto walks her down the aisle. Wow. Holy shit. This is what we do. We push ourselves to the point of saying something crazier than we originally planned to. Yeah, that is nowhere in my notes. That was <laughs> all that beer I just chugged. All right, well... I think we can say this. We are intrigued. They have me on the hook. I would really prefer to be reeled in in episode three. And I will say this. Getting the rest of the season, I'm assuming, one episode at a time, I would like a little bit more plot development in the subsequent episodes. That's my I'm going to need a little bit more. Yeah. I get it's a fun premise. We're diving through the decades and sitcom lore. But if we could maybe do 10 to 15 minutes of that, 10 minutes of pushing the plot forward, I'd be fine with that. But what we had here was... 40 minutes of I Love Lucy and Dick Van Dyke show and three and a half to five minutes of actually telling us what this show's about. Which is good for a one-off, but it's not. I don't think it's a sustainable model for a nine-episode season. I agree. All right, any last thoughts before we let the people go? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, we'll see where this goes. I This is not one that I'm going to give up on. If I don't like it, I will suffer through it. So just stick with us all season. This is kind of replacing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm excited. Yeah. And it's cool because it's, of course, directly connected to the MCU. We don't have to try and piece together like, what is this action? Is it, thing? Is it not? It's explicit. All right. For the Mad Scientist, Brian Banner. I'm the Mayor Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro4 Squad Podcast. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. We will be here for the rest of WandaVision right along with you guys. Please check out all of our reviews. You can find everything we post on our website, bro4squad.com. If you type in Bro Force Squad as three separate words on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube, you'll find all of our content there. And also follow us on Twitter 
at Brofor Squad. Till next time, Brian and I need to both put on our one piece bikinis. We have to do a magic trick for the town talent show. Why are when we both? How the fuck did we get a laugh track? It's, it's something I bought with the company card. I didn't tell you that I made that purchase. No, I would not have approved that. Yeah, yeah it was expensive too, actually. I got ripped off. Awesome.